And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nerds to Kieran, and welcome to this Games Gun edition of Medieval 2 Total War, where today we're going to have a look at how you can modify some permanent stone forts into the game. Stone forts do actually exist within Medieval 2 Total War, but only in the Britannia DLC. One of the things they experimented here, alongside things like the Baron's Alliance and lots of emergent characters, are these permanent stone forts. They even had themselves some free upkeep slots, which is absolutely marvellous. Indeed, that's something that we're going to experiment with today. We want to take some of these really cool little features here, and we want to put them into the main game, or whichever mod or DLC we wish. Now, on the Britannia expansion, it does come with the slight downside that you can't actually build any more forts for yourself. These are all pre-programmed into the game map at the very start. If you compare this to the vanilla campaign, it is quite different. Of course, here you can build yourselves forts whenever you like. They cost 500 to build. And you'll notice that, of course, there is no free upkeep. The final thing, of course, is the permanents. They go at the end of a turn if they are not currently occupied. So we can actually mix and match all these different features that we're seeing here. And of course, getting a full stone fort on the battlefield, oh, that has huge, huge advantages. As with any modding on Medieval 2 Total War, we do need to unpack the files first and of course change the preference file here to make sure all of our changes stick. If you need to do that, I do have a guide on that. There is a link in the description below. To make the changes I want then, I need to head inside this, the data subfolder. But of course, if I want to modify a specific mod, I need to head inside that mod equivalent folder. And that counts for the DLC too. So for example, with the Americas, I need to head inside its equivalent version of the data folder. However, I'm going to focus simply on the base game for this video. And indeed, if you edit the base folders, it will take effect over all of those mods. So it's just worth bearing that in mind. So I'm gonna head inside data. And from there, I'm going to scroll down to Deska underscore campaign. And from there, it's this bit here, underscore DB. So we're gonna open this up and right click that and open it up with notepad. Once inside the file, we need to look a little bit further down to the settlement section, but you might well notice that some of this looks quite familiar. And that's because we looked at the auto resolve section in a previous video when we tried to fix the slightly passive AI that doesn't really expand very quickly. But it doesn't matter if you've already made that change here, we can just simply change these two lines down here because these are the two that refer to today's video on stone forts. Now, we can see here we've got destroyed the empty forts, which is currently listed as true. If we want that to be a permanent fort, well, we simply change that around to false. And the same here about building forts. Obviously, on the Britannia version of the DLC, this is how it looks. It's got false here because obviously they're permanent, but it's also going to have false here because it doesn't want you to build a load of permanent forts all over the map. However, we're going to leave this on for now so we can build them and they also remain permanent. And that's all we need to actually do in this file. So we're going to save that up and then we can move on to the next task. From here, we're going to head back to the ever faithful desk underscore strat file. But we're actually going to go and peek at the Britannia version first because it has some important information that we want to copy and paste over. So to do that, we're going to head back into Medieval 2. We're going to head into mods from there into the British Shells, the Britannia campaign into data and then to desk strat so world maps campaign imperial campaign and desk underscore strat there are two main pieces of information we need to take from this file and the first of which is fairly obvious right at the top of the file and highlighted in blue for you the free upkeep for all the garrisoned units or at least as many as are listed by the number here we saw in the introduction that there were two free garrison units and this is why we can change around this number if we so want to. Right near the bottom of this file then we'll also find the start of region section which traditionally is left pretty much empty or doesn't really exist at all. Essentially it lists any buildings which are going to exist at the start of the game. So we have ourselves a fort here in the Caithness and Sutherland region as well as a watchtower. Now the watchtowers are of course quite simple, you simply have your cells at the coordinates but the stone forts do have a little bit more information. It tells you which type. There are five different ones inside this DLC here, as well as the culture 
Obviously, they're all Northern European because that is what the Britannia DLC is based in. We'll come back to that stuff in a little bit more detail later. But what we want to do for now is to simply take one part of this section. So we'll just grab the top of it here. You can see here each region does get referenced as we go along. So we'll just copy that section there. And now what we want to do is head back to the main version of the Deska Strat file. From the mod file then we want to head all the way back to Medieval 2 Total War and back inside its data folder. We're then going to go from there down to World and find its Deska Strat file within Maps, Campaign, Imperial Campaign and Deska underscore Strat. Once inside the file then we're going to immediately scroll down and solve the first problem which is the garrison upkeeps. So underneath this little section here most of it really just left over text from Rome Total War of course this is built on the same engine we need to add in the free garrison section so free underscore upkeep underscore forts then we got a space and then we've got two or at least that's what it was on that original version on the DLC we're going to change it up to five let's have five free upkeep units marvellous if we scroll all the way down to the bottom then we'll find the start of the region section which as I alluded to simply tells the game to run the script. Now we are of course going to paste in our version from the other file which will give us the opportunity to build watchtowers and forts. Now what we of course need to do though is find the correct information. At the moment the game is going to be very very confused because this region doesn't exist. So before I save this up, I'm going to head back into the game and we're going to see how we can find the information that we need to get the right coordinates and to get the right region names. Here we are then with King William the Conqueror and perhaps he wants to build himself a little fort out in the Essex countryside. Perhaps he wants to protect his salt mines in Malden. So to make sure no more Vikings come along and cause problems, he'll build himself a fort. But lucky now with the changes we made, it should indeed be permanent. There we go. So that's what we want to be happening. We of course also set it to be able to have five free upkeep units. And indeed that is also working, albeit King William the Conqueror is sitting weirdly at the end of the list there. Hey ho, no problem with that. But what we do need to do of course is work out how to get these forts to appear at the very beginning. And for that we need more information. So if we right click and hover over the region, you can see it will give you the name Nottingham region. But for the coordinates itself, well, that is slightly more tricky. What we need to do is hover over the particular piece of land we want to build the fort on, and we need to open up the medieval shell. So for me, that is the comma button. It might not be the tilde for you. It is that for Rome Total War on my computer, but it might well vary. So however, you need to open up your command console then you need to do that. And from there, with your icon hovering over the spot you want, you need to type show underscore cursor stat, making sure you type it correctly. Now it will tell you the position 112, 148. So I'm gonna make a little note of that. And it is region ID 21, Nottingham region. So it will give you a little reminder of that information as well. So wherever you want to place your own forts at the beginning of the game, you need to get your information from here. The last thing we need to do before we change that around in desk underscore strat though, is to find the exact region and settlement name the game is looking for. And to do that, we need to look at this file here, just above desk underscore strat. So the regions and settlement name lookup file. As you scroll down this file, you'll find all the town names and their respective regions. Now, of course, we can find Nottingham here. It doesn't say Nottingham region. It says Nottingham underscore province. So I'm going to copy that. And that's the name we need to refer to in the file. Back inside desk underscore strat, then we now need to change around this region section to the correct name, which, of course, is Nottingham underscore province. From there, we're simply going to change around the coordinates so that they are 112 one four eight perfect we're going to keep the stone fort as type a and the culture is northern european that's fine i will though just change around this watchtower as well to another set of coordinates that i looked up shortly after the fort so let's save this up and see what effect that has on our game here we are back inside the game then you can see we now have ourselves a watchtower up in bedford and we have ourselves a fort over in Malden, which is just marvellous. We already know, of course, that it will keep five units as upkeep. And we know that if we take them out, that it will indeed remain permanent. 
but there are still just a couple problems we need to fix. Number one, this is not a stone fort right now. It's not in the picture here, and it's not in the battle map either. So those are the two next things that we need to go back into the game files to solve. If you are going to put some forts onto the map from the very start of the game, you might well want to place some units already in there, particularly if they're not going to be permanent. So to do that, you simply need to know the coordinates and dump one of your units in there. So we've got England here, and I thought, why not move one of his armies over in that direction? And always remember, Rufus stands around ready to take York. On this occasion, we're going to move him slightly further down south. So... Here we are, 112, and we're going to change this to 148. And with that, he'll now be moved down to our new fort to take care of it. To turn our basic fort into shiny stone forts, then, we need to head back into Medieval 2 Total War and back into the Britannia mod. So, into mods, into British Isles, data, and from there we need to head into this folder here, Settlements. From there, we're going to head into the North European culture, into ambient settlements. And then we have this selection of four different forts. I am going to copy those. And then what we need to do is head back into the main game of Medieval 2 Total War, back into their version of that same set of files. So into data, into settlements, into North European and into ambient settlements. Now this of course has an awful lot more in here. Now I'm just going to paste these in but it's not quite as simple as that. We're going to need to replace the original fort folder here with one of these. Now essentially you can pick whichever you like and indeed you might well want to have a little look at what these four different fort types are like so I'll just show you that now. Stone Fort A is pretty much what you'd hope it would be. A nice moaty lake on one side, along with the plaza, which of course means that they're going to be forced to attack the other side. Now, this is a little bit weaker, it should be said. Quite a lot of empty wall, not an awful lot of towers, but it's a pretty solid fort overall. I'd probably give it a good 7 out of 10. Stone Fort B is an absolute monster with a moat almost the entire way round, and only about three parts of wall you can even attack with ladders. Oh, this is going to cause monstrous, monstrous amounts of casualties. You've even got yourself a huge plaza right at the back there. This one, for being a demonic monster, gets a grand 10 out of 10. Stonefort C may well look resplendent in the evening sun, but you might well think that it looks just a little bit basic. But its looks are rather deceiving because it's incredibly compact. And what that means is all these towers can be shooting down at once. So for its sheer reign of terror, I'm giving this 9 out of 10. Finally, Stonefort D then, which has this ridiculous mega trench all the way around, filled with anti-cav spikes, which is somewhat redundant, seeing as cavalry can't actually attack the walls anyway. Nonetheless, I do like its sheer audacity. The rest of this fort, however, does seem to have some very weak points on the sides and the rear, but the centre is pretty solid. So, in honour of Agincourt, I'll give this a 12 or 15. Having selected the most badass fort of them all then, I'm going to simply copy this, and head back towards the top of the file where I can enter the fort folder. I'm going to paste in the stone fort D folder into here. And if I open that up, you'll notice that the files inside are pretty much exactly the same. Obviously just slightly different designs for the fort. So what we need to do is head back into here and just grab the name at the front. So any underscore fort underscore A. Now they all have that at the front. So what we need to do really is head into here and step by step just replace each of these. Now, as you might well expect, once we've done that, we will simply erase the original version and we'll run with these instead. It's obviously a good time to remind you that it makes sense to make sure you have backups of all the various files that you might well be changing around. So, having done that, I can grab all of those. I'm just going to cut those. I'll head back in here and I'm going to delete those, paste those back in. Now the other thing we need to do is head inside maps over here. So we're going to do the same thing again. This time we've got Northern European Fort underscore farm one. So we need to do pretty much the same thing again, but for these files. So I'll just grab that whilst we're here. Lovely. And we'll head back into this version of the files into overlays. There we are. So it is virtually the same once again, but we're just 
going to change the name around. So once we've done all of that, we'll be absolutely ready to make sure that we've now got this new fort in the game. So I'm just going to finish up trying to copy these over as much as possible. And yeah, just make sure some mud and path are the words that we need to grab there. Back into stone fort maps overlays. A little bit fiddly, of course. And once you've done that, it's the same except it's path. Lovely. Right, with all of that done then, we can head back into the fort folder, erase the original maps, and just drag this back into there. That is marvellous. And then we can get rid of that. Okay, so what we've done essentially there is we've replaced the original fort with a new version of the fort. And at this point, we can reload the game. To check that these work on the battle map then, what we need to do is head into a battle. And luckily I've got one of these set up over here on this game as France. So we can sally forth out of the town and head into battle. Here we are then as France in our absolute doom fortress of a fort. It is a little bit ridiculous quite frankly, but hey ho, we'll send him out to his almost certain death, although actually this looks like a terrible, terrible army. But yes, you can see this has started to work now, but there are still a few little things yet to solve. In order that our shiny new stone forts look the part, we are going to head back inside the Britannia folder into data and then the models underscore strat folder. From there, we're going to head inside residences and we simply want to grab these three files here and copy them. We're going to take these back into the base game folder. So I'm going to head back into Medieval 2 Total War. I'm going to head into Data, into Model Strat, into Residences, and we are simply going to paste these in here. We can replace the original three files, and that is going to fix it on the campaign map. Our last small change then is just to make sure that when we build ourselves a new fort, we have the right icon pop up because, of course, the usual picture is not of a stone fort, but just a basic wooden one. So to do that, we would, of course, take it from Britannia, except they can't build forts on that, so the icon doesn't really exist. We're just going to steal the castle card instead. So what we're going to do is head back into data, scroll down to the UI folder, from there into Northern European, or whichever culture it is that you're editing, and you'll notice that it's got the little fort icon there. That's the old basic fort. So we're going to replace it with a castle, into buildings, into construction, and from here, we should be able to find ourselves castle. Um, it does help if you don't type castles because it's very, very picky here. So Northern European Castle, we'll grab that little file there, copy that, and we'll just move ourselves back a few folders. We're going to paste it in here. And all we need to do is just give it the same name as this has there. So I'm going to grab that name fort and delete that. I'm going to replace it with this new file here. And I believe we are now ready to load up the game and we are now completely ready to enjoy our stone forts. Here we are then playing as England once again and you can see Prince Rufus has indeed manfully decided to man the fort down here in Malden, just like we asked him to earlier. And indeed he's now in a proper stone looking fort and if we want to create our own new ones, well King William the Conqueror is well known for that and we've got ourselves a proper icon which is fitting for the purpose. As we've seen, we can give them free upkeep if that's what you want to do. We are able to make them permanent, as we have well seen. And if you are just a little bit worried about the uh, potential silliness with the permanent forts here, do bear in mind you can't actually put a fort next to another one. It does need to have a full square of space. So whilst I could go on continually filling up all of this, um, yeah, eventually I'm going to run out of space. It's actually between this watchtower, this fort, this town and the river. Yeah, I've managed to not make the place too crowded with forts. But anyhow, this is a, pretty much a guide just to let you do what you would like with it. But I will have to leave you for now. Um, I have had this requested quite a few times. So um, to the chap who keeps on requesting it, whose name I, I would try to pronounce, but um, it isn't even an alphabet that I can read. So... Uh, shout out to you, my good sir. I hope you can finally enjoy all of your modding, modding dreams with the stone fort. Certainly, I think we could use these in a future campaign. I'll have to consider what exactly that might be. So uh, I will perhaps have to see you for that. Any suggestions in the comments below. But I will leave you for now. I am Thomas. This is Tennis here in 
and this has been a little guide to Medieval 2, how to modify and edit the stone forts. Thank you and goodbye. Today we're going to go for particularly aggressive diplomacy. Oh, oh yes, it worked. Kablamo! <laughs> you are always going to die, Steve. Oh, my feudal knights! My crispy, crispy feudal knights! The ram's burning! <laughs> right in the death!